Now let's practice this on another equation. I've written the equation in front of you and it's a balanced chemical equation. And what the equation tells you is that the ratio that's uh, given is that three magnesiums are reacting with two molecules of uh, H3PO4. They're producing one H magnesium phosphate and they're producing three molecules of H2. So that's the ratio in which your reactants are reacting and your products are being produced. Now uh, I'm going to uh, say let's say I have 0 0.18 moles of magnesium. So let's assume I have 0 0.18 moles of magnesium. The first thing I want to do is I want to figure out how many moles of phosphoric acid are needed for this reaction and how many moles of magnesium phosphate and how many moles of hydrogen gas are going to be produced. So first thing that we're going to figure out is the amount of H3PO4. Now I know if you look at the ratio, three magnesiums react with two phosphoric acids. So that's the simplest ratio in which these two are reacting. So let's pick that. I know that three magnesiums react with two phosphoric acids. So if I have 0 0.18 moles, then that would need X amount of phosphoric acid. And I'm going to use ratios cross multiply and that would give me 3x would be equal to 2 multiplied by 0 0.18 and get rid of the 3 from that side and I would divide that by 3 and I will use my calculator to solve this it's going to be 2 multiplied by 0 0.18 divided by 3 which equals 0 0.12 moles so so this here is 0 0.12 moles so the amount of phosphoric acid needed to react with 0 0.18 moles of magnesium is going to be 0 0.12 moles. And remember, I'm using this ratio over here that was given in the chemical equation. Now I want to figure out how much phosphoric acid would be produced. And I can pick any ratio. Let's look at phosphoric acid over here. I know that two phosphoric acid molecules produce one. So I can use that ratio. I know that two produce one. So if I have 0 0.12 moles, which is over here, so if I have 0 0.12 moles, they are going to produce X amount of magnesium phosphate and I'm going to cross multiply, use the unitary method, use ratios, and that would give me 2X is equal to 0 0.12 multiplied by one. And I'm going to get rid of the two over there and divide this by two and it's going to give me 0 0.06 moles. Similarly, I want to know the amount of hydrogen gas that would be produced and I can use ratios once more, but I can simplify my case by looking uh, by, by looking at the ratios. If you look at hydrogen, hydrogen has in the in the chemical equation, hydrogen has a ratio of three. Magnesium also has a ratio of three. So if you compare magnesium, which is three and hydrogen, which is also in a ratio of three, which means that the amount of magnesium and the amount of hydrogen, the ratio between the two amounts is 3 ratio 3, which means whatever the amount of magnesium, that's going to be exactly the same amount of hydrogen. So if I have 0 0.18 moles, this would give me 0 0.18 moles of H2 molecules. So just to simplify, simplify my case, I'm not comparing it with any other ratio except for I'm I found it easier to compare it with magnesium because magnesium and hydrogen had exactly the same ratio and if they have the same ratio the quantities are going to be exactly the same so this is how i've been able to figure out uh, the moles of all the substance the first moles were given i was given that i had 0 0.18 moles of magnesium and i was able to figure out that that required 0 0.12 moles of phosphoric acid and the products produced magnesium phosphate came out to be 0 0.06 moles again using ratios and hydrogen gas came out to be 0 0.18 moles in the next step, what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and find the mass of all the substances. We have already figured out what the what the moles are and uh, we just need to find out the moles are already calculated and I've uh, removed all the working. So it's 0 0.18 moles of magnesium reacting with uh, uh, 0.12 moles of phosphoric acid uh, producing 0 0.06 moles of uh, Mg3PO4 uh, magnesium phosphate and uh, you have 0.18 moles of hydrogen gas. So the next step is let's find the mass of all these substances and I have this formula over here which is going to be used to find the mass. So the formula is moles is equal to mass over MR or AR. So let's start with uh, magnesium first. You have 0 0.18 moles. So moles 
is equal to mass over MR or AR in this case you have magnesium and remember magnesium is 24 now I need to you need to be careful when you're talking about AR or MR it's only going to be the AR or MR of magnesium the 3 stands for the ratio in which these reactants are reacting we've already incorporated that so you're not going to use this uh, 3 anywhere the AR is only for that particular substance so for magnesium it's 24 it's not 24 it's not going to be 24 multiplied by 3 it's only going to be 24 so using this and i'm going to do use my calculator to calculate the mass now it's going to be 0 0.18 multiplied by 24 which gives me 4.32 grams so my mass comes out to be 4.32 grams and that's my mass Moving on, let's find the mass of phosphoric acid. I have 0 0.12 moles of phosphoric acid. Moles is equal to mass over MR, which in this case is, and remember the MR is only going to be used for phosphoric acid. Do not mix this 2 with, this, with phosphoric acid. This 2 is the ratio that we have already incorporated. You're not going to use that again. So phosphoric acid is the, the three hydrogens, so that's three. Plus there's one phosphorus, which is 31. And then you have uh, four oxygens, which is 16 into four. And if you calculate for the mass, the mass would come out to be equal to, it's going to be 0 0.12 multiplied by three plus 31 plus 16 into four. And that would give me 98. So it's 0.12 multiplied by 98, which is equal to 11.76. 11.76 grams. Let's move to magnesium phosphate now. Uh, the moles are already known, so it's 0 0.06 moles, which should be equal to mass over MR. And the MR is going to be 24 into 3, the 3 magnesiums. And then PO4, there are two PO4s, so that's uh, PO4 combined is 31 plus 16 into 4. And then you're going to multiply that by 2. So you add them up, there are two, two phosphates. So this would be 24 multiplied by 3. Plus you have uh, 31 plus 16 into 4. So 16 into 4 is 64 plus 31, that's 95 into 2. And then you're going to multiply that by 0 0.06. And this value comes out to be 15.72 grams. So that's your mass for magnesium phosphate that's going to be produced. And lastly, you, uh, we want to find the mass of hydrogen. That's easy. It's 0 0.18 moles. Moles is equal to mass over MR. And the MR of hydrogen, hydrogen has, uh, the hydrogen molecule has two hydrogens. So it's one plus one, that's two. It's going to be 0.18 into two. So it's 0.18 multiplied by two, which gives me 0.36 grams. And lastly, if you want to check whether your answers are correct, you can use the apply the conservation law of conservation of mass. Your reactants had the mass of had a mass of 4.32 grams and a mass of 11.76 grams. And your product had a mass of 15.72 grams plus 0 0.36 grams. Now, if you add them up, you're going to get the same value, which means that your calculations are, are correct. They've been checked as well by the law of conservation of mass. So that's how you're going to, if you're given moles of a substance, you can convert that directly into mass. Now let's do another example, looking like moles, mass, and the ratio in an equation. So I have an equation, a balanced chemical equation in front of you where aluminum oxide is reacting with HCl and producing AlCl3 and you're getting water as a product as well so the ratios are given one molecule of Al2O3 reacts with six molecules of HCl producing two molecules of AlCl3 and three molecules of H2O so let's write the ratios down so it's one ratio reacting with six HCl 
producing two AlCl3 and three water molecules. So that's the ratio in which reactants and products are reacting and taking part in the reaction. So let's say I have I have 2.43 moles of aluminium oxide. Now that's given. So I have 2.43 moles of aluminium oxide, and I want to figure out what is the amount of uh, moles of HCl that are going to react with it. So I'm going to use ratios. What I'm going to do is I know that Al2O3 reacts with HCl, and the ratio of the uh, and the ratio in which they're reacting is one ratio six. So let's use that ratio. It's one ratio six. One reacts with six. So 2.43 is going to react with x, the unknown, and I'm going to cross multiply, and the x would be multiplied by one, and that would be six multiplied by 2.43. Now use your calculator to solve this, it's going to be six. So you have six multiplied by 2.43, and that gives a value of 14.58 moles. So let's uh, rub this off. So it's 14.58 moles. of HCl. Similarly, we can uh, work out the moles of AlCl3 and we, I, I can pick any two ratios to work out the moles of AlCl3. So let's uh, pick HCl. We have six, mole uh, six molecules of HCl react and producing two molecules of AlCl3. So the ratio between HCl and between AlCl3 is six ratio two. So let's uh, use that ratio. So it's six ratio two. I know that six HCLs re produce two AlCl3. So if I have 14.58 moles, it's going to produce X and I'm going to use ratios, cross multiply. So my X, six would be multiplied by X and that would be equal to two multiplied by 14.58 and get rid of the six from that side. Divide this by six and use your calculator to solve this and you're going to get uh, it's 14.58 multiplied by 2 and you're going to divide by 6 and that gives you 4.86 moles so that produces 4.86 moles of ALCL3 and lastly we need to figure out the moles of H2O that are going to be produced and again I can pick any two ratios so let's pick ALCL3 uh, and H2O, the ratio is 2 ratio 3. So if you have 2 ALCL3s, it produces 3 H2Os. So I'm going to pick that ratio. So I know that 2 ALCL3 produces 3 H2O. So if you have 4.86 moles, then they're going to produce X and I'm going to cross multiply. And that would give me 2X is equal to 3 multiplied by 4.86 and get rid of the 2 on that side divided by 2 so let's solve that it's going to be 4.86 4.86 multiplied by 3 and divided by 2 and that gives me 7.29 moles Now we have found out the moles of all the substances in the equation. Aluminium oxide has a, have, uh, has a mole of 2.43 moles. HCl has 14.58 moles and AlCl3 has 4.86 moles and H2O has 7.29 moles. Now we're going to use this formula, moles is equal to mass over MR or AR, and we're going to find, figure out the mass of all the substances. So starting with the uh, aluminium oxide, Al2O3, we're going to use the formula, moles is 2.43 moles is equal to mass over the MR which is going to be 27 multiplied by 2 and you have 3 oxygens so it's 16 into 3 and you're going to solve this on your calculator and this would give a mass which would be equal to it's going to be equal to 247.86 grams so solving on a calculator that gives us 247 point eight six grams similarly we have uh, HCl let's try and figure out the mass of HCl we have the moles which is uh, the moles for HCl are 14.58 moles is equal to mass which is the unknown divided by the MR for HCl the MR is going to be 1 plus 36 point 
five. Remember, whenever you're calculating MR or AR, don't use the six. The six is only a ratio that represents the ratio in which these two are reacting with each other. So, so the MR is independent of this. If you're talking about HCl, HCl has an MR. Uh, it's going to have an MR of you're just going to you're not going to multiply it by six. HCl is HCl. So we're going to solve this now. And if we solve this, the mass doing this on our calculator, the mass would uh, come out to be equal to 532.17 grams. So that's the mass that I would get. Let's move to ALCL3 now. We have ALCL3 and uh, it has 4.86 moles. The mass of ALCL3 is unknown. The MR for ALCL3 is 27 plus the three chlorines. So that's 35.5 multiplied by three. And if we solve this for mass, this would give us the answer for mass is going to be, it's going to be solving this on our calculators. It's going to be 648.81 grams. And lastly, we have H2O. Now the moles of H2O are 7.29 moles and moles is equal to mass. We want to find the mass. The MR of H2O is 18. Hydrogen is one in the periodic table, oxygen is 16. So 16 plus one plus one, that's going to be 18. So we're going to find the mass now. The mass of H2O comes out to be 131.8. 22 grams so we've basically been able to figure out all the masses of all the substances involved in this reaction we've uh, we know the mass of the reactants we know the mass of the products and remember the law you can check the masses by using the law of conservation of mass the reactants should have exactly the same mass as your product so so adding these masses the total mass of the reactant should be the same as the total mass of the products and you can check that and confirm that so it's going to be 247.86 plus 532.17 that's your reactants they should be equal to your products which have a mass of 648.81 grams plus 131.22 grams so if you if you check this this would act as a counter check for you to confirm whether the masses that you calculated are correct or not in this case, it's going to be correct.